y'all, Coach in a Fight here, talking about the three days of darkness. Now, we've recently been working on videos as our Father has been helping us to crack the code on the 1,260 days and the 42 months of Revelation. And in that, as we were working on some of the um, videos um, and putting together charts and diagrams and pictures on it, um, one reoccurring thought has been on the three days of darkness. Now, I don't, up until this point, up until this very day, I've never studied the three days of darkness. I've only heard other people um, mention it usually in comments to you know certain videos on our channel they'll come in and they'll say something about the three days of darkness but you know i never knew what it was and um i even went in and looked in the uh concordance to see if i could find anything on the three days of darkness even in the apocryphal books enoch and jubilees they don't mention anything about three days of darkness with the exception of course back there in egypt with moses but that's not what they were talking about they're talking about some futuristic event and so today I decided to go in and do some research, find out what is the three days of darkness. And I found one channel over there on YouTube, well, a couple of them, where they were talking about the three days of darkness. But they were Catholic channels. Turns out this is a Catholic, um, I'm not sure what you call this lady, um, um, that's actually brought out this three days of darkness. It comes from Catholicism. Well, I decided to listen, you know, to, you know, what they were saying, you know, to see if there was any truth in, in it, what they're saying. And I believe there is. I believe to understand the three days of darkness, you have to have a good interpreter. That's what I wrote in the comment section of the, one of the videos that I watched is this lady actually, you know, got it right. If you can interpret what she's saying, you have to. First of all, get past all of the Catholicism that she's talking about. She, you know, everything she's saying is from a Catholic perspective. But, you know, you once you get past that, you know, if she was a Catholic lady, so you can't, you know, fault her for that. But you have to, you have to be able to see through it. I don't know if many of you guys heard about um, um, this this lady. I got, I got a playlist on my channel called Channeling the Father, where. There's this lady named Claire who seems to be doing just that, channeling the father. And, you know, it. you could tell that what she's hearing is coming uh, from the spirit world. You know, there's some divinity. A lot of most of it, I'd say almost all of it is, you know, divinely inspired words. You can tell if you have um, discernment or whatever. But, you know, she tends to use words that you know, and puts things in a way that she understands and you have to be able to get past that. Well, that's the same thing with this lady right here. So, um, there's more, more truth to it than not, I guess is my point. You just have to be able to interpret it. It needs a good interpreter and anybody's in the Catholic church, they're not going to be a good interpreter. <laughs> I will tell you now, because, you know, they are going to want to believe that this is for them. You know, it talks about how anybody who um, is not in favor of the church will be killed during the three days of darkness. And so they're like, yeah, you know, anybody who's not a Catholic is going to die. And, you know, um, that's not really true. Anybody that's not a Catholic knows that that ain't true at all. But anyway, <clears throat> so we're over here at a website. Um, we're at uh, Wikipedia looking at the three days of darkness and we're going to go down and we're going to read our quote. It's not very long and we're going to interpret it. Uh, this is coming from they call her Blessed Anna Maria Tiagi. Um, she was some type of prophet from the 17th or the 18th century. Um, says she is known. She is a known seer. Of the three days of darkness and describes the event in this way. Let me go get my glasses. I can tell already. Um, I'm not gonna do good with this if I don't find my glasses. All right, let's jump right into it. It says, "There shall come over the whole earth 
and intense darkness lasting three days and three nights. Okay, now, like I said, you need an interpreter because this is not really three days that she's talking about. Like I said, there's more truth in this in this document that I'm going to read than it's not, but you have to be able to interpret it. And the first thing you have to understand is that these three days are actually going to be three years. Three years. Like I said, we've been working to crack the code of the 1,260 days. We've been cracking the code of the 10 days of all that started there in the year 2017. And we'll uh, go to um, about... Uh, 2027 but in the midst of that there are a um there's the day of atonement and between the day of atonement and or the year of atonement i should say the year of atonement and the um the years that will start the tabernacling period there are um that's when i believe these three years of darkness will take place um I'm not really ready to tell you exactly what three years those are. But just understand that towards the end of the tribulation, at the very end of the tribulation, before, you know, our father comes back, you know, so to speak. Of course, he's already back now in the spirit. But before the whole world realizes that and, you know, um, before the world, you know, comes to that realization, there will be a three days of darkness and or three years of darkness. Okay, it says, nothing can be seen, and the air will be laden with pestilence, which will claim mainly, but not only, the enemies of religion. Okay, now, she's talking about these enemies of religion. Um, okay, now, what it's talking about, not necessarily, that's a really wrong word to use there. Maybe she was speaking in a foreign language or something, and somebody interpreted this for, for her. But what this is talking about is, um, what's the word to use? Um, I want to say righteousness. You remember over in Revelations where it talks about um, how there will be a war against those who keep the commandments? That's what this is talking about. And that's where she's getting this religion from because, you know, of the saints and stuff that will be keeping the commandments. There will be a war against them. And but that will be early in the tribulation, late in the tribulation. Um, you will have these dark forces that will be working against those uh, people that are fighting against the remnant that I was calling the remnant that will be keeping the commandments. And see where it says nothing can be seen. Um this is on a spiritual nature. This whole three days of darkness is more of a spiritual thing than a physical thing. Where you, the sun's going to still be out. There's still going to be light to the eyes, which may be confusion to, you know, like we said, those Catholic individuals and other people who would want to only see this materialistically. Um, the sun will still be up. You'll still be able to see, you know, this and that. But what's going to be hidden is the the light of religion the like we have now you have churches um that you may go down and you may you know get some get the word of the lord or you may have um um uh, inspiration or, or something like that that's what's actually going to go dark that's what you're not going to be able to see there's going to be um three days of confusion three days where like I, like i would think now you know, if you prayed, you can get inspiration. You can, you know, that's what's going to be shut off. Um, some people, you know, would say something like the third eye is going to be closed. Our connection to the spirit world will be cut off for these three days. That's what it's talking about there. Um, and and so nothing will be seen. And then the air will be laden with pestilence. Um Pestilence, I believe pestilence is kind of like diseases or, or whatever, but this is talking about a spiritual leprosy that's going to be over the people. Um, it kind of starts with that um, the Antichrist figure, that lawless you know, guy, it kind of starts there. Um, but then it kind of spreads out It's you know, all of humanity is kind of going for the Antichrist and listening to his his falsehood. You can imagine, you know, um that they're going to end up in, in a dark place. If we were talking materialistically, you know, he's going to lead them, you know, in the wrong place, into some dark places. But, you know, he's leading them into some spiritually dark places. Um, it says, which will claim mainly but not only the enemies of religion. Um, so 
those that are fighting against the remnant will will be those that will perish during this time is what it's talking about there. Um, let's see, but not only the enemies of religion. So that kind of implies that some of the people who are not enemies to religion will perish as well. And maybe these are some of the remnant or maybe these are some of the people that are just neutral. They're, they aren't the remnant, but they are not making war against the remnant. Those that keep the commandments will perish too. She says, it will be impossible to use any man-made lighting during this darkness except blessed candles. Now, this is like we was talking about earlier, where you would try to get a word from the church. So you're not going to be able to pick up the Bible and get a word from the spirit world. You're not going to talking about those who are the enemies of religion the, or the enemy of the remnant. Um, that's what it means by blessed candles. These who have the true lanterns, the, the real oil, they will still have light. The father's remnant will still have light. But those who are on the outskirts, those who aren't really uh, believers or those that don't keep the commandments and such, they ain't going to be able to, to, to get none. You know, you can imagine some guy that may be an atheist now who he don't really care now. And, and then when he gets in trouble, he might, you know, say, well, maybe I should start praying. Well, when this day comes, his prayers aren't going to do him any any good. You know, he's not going to be able to produce any light. You know, he's not going to be able to pick up um, a Bible or pick up a, a sermon or pick up something and get some type of inspiration. No, you're going to be in those three days of darkness and it's really going to be shut off to him. Um, except the blessed candles. And that's talking about, um, you can think of those blessed candles um, when you think about like Revelations chapter two and verse three, when you're talking about those seven golden camps, uh, lampstands and that th those will be the only ones that will be lit during that time. Uh, it says he who out of curiosity opens his window to look out or leaves him home will fall dead on the spot. So these are talking about the remnant who may want to go out and listen to the false prophet or go out and listen to the antichrist. You know, they, they, they're good in their own homes, staying in their lane in that protective position that the father has put them in at that time. And if they take one step out of it and say, you know, I want to see what's going on out in the world and what they're talking about over there, you know, they, they will lose their spirituality right then. They'll be cut off. And then they'll, they too will find themselves in a dark place is what this is talking about. Um, um, it's kind of like now, you know, you have, you can imagine, you, you may do so yourself where, okay, you know, we're listening to a uh, coach in the fight, talk about, you know, righteousness and holiness. But, you know, you remember the day when you liked that other channel that used to talk, you know, that, uh, that other stuff. And you say, well, let me go over there and see what they talking about. And then, you know, you, there, there ain't no coming back. You don't never get to, um, come back to hear about the light anymore because you dabbled in the darkness, even for a second during this three days of darkness. So it says during these three days, people should remain in their homes, pray the rosary and beg God for mercy. Yeah. So this is this is um, what we're talking about. And there's that, that Catholic slant on there because don't nobody else care nothing about no rosary. Um, that's materialistic stuff that, you know, don't really mean nothing to the rest of us. And but there is a spiritual equivalent. I can't say I know exactly what that equivalent is, you know, right here and now. But um, there's something that needs to be interpreted as far as that's concerned. I guess while they're reading, they're playing with their rosary beads or whatever, the rest of us are reading the word. And that's exactly what we need to be doing during that time is, you know, studying our scripture. You know, that rosary ain't going to help you. But, you know, if you're reading the scripture during that time, especially the remnant, then you can be getting inspirations during those time, during those time. Uh, during those three years, uh, people should remain in their homes. So not go outside of your lane. You know, you may still, you know, um, be, you know, around your yard or whatever. And, you know, may even be still doing stuff, going to visit a neighbor or two or whatever. But this is more talking about, you know, staying in your lane. Don't be, you know, going over to the other guys. Don't be hanging around the the uh, dark side during this time because you're going to get caught over there. 
and you know you're gonna find yourself in darkness um beg god for mercy so this will be a time of repentance you know i believe this starts during the atonement year and you know which is of course is going to it's going to be more of a physical thing that atonement is actually going to be um a lot of people will perish during that atonement year in in the book of revelation you can hear about that atonement time when you start hearing about that grape harvest where you know, he told them to go in and put this, put this sickle in and reap because the earth is ready to be reaped. That's a lot of people dying during that time. That's what that is, that souls of man being harvested into the spirit world. That's a lot, a lot of death. And during that time is when you really want to have a repentant heart. Repentance goes a long way as far as covering up the stains that we have on our spirit. And so, you know, you want to be, you know, making sure you aren't producing any more stains and trying to get rid of the old ones. And that's why you will be begging God for mercy. All the enemies of the church, whether known or unknown, would perish over the whole earth during that universal darkness, with the exception of a few whom God will soon convert. Okay, so we're talking about the, um, the people who keep the commandments here. These are the enemies of those who keep the commandments. Like we said, there's going to be a war early. Even now, you'll see, you know, early, you know, where, you know, it seems like the enemies of those who keep the commandments have the upper hand. They've always had the upper hand. You know, it's, we live in a very dark world where evil is more dominant than, you know, righteousness or more dominant than good. And that's going to continue for a while. But the, but during this day right here that we're talking about, these three years of darkness, the tables are going to turn. And um, those that are the enemy of the people who keep the commandments, those that are at war against the, the ones who... the the, the remnant there that you read about over in the book of Revelation, um, the, the tables are going to turn and then all of them are going to perish. Every one of the wicked is going to be exterminated during this, this tribulation. Um, the scripture, you know, it talks about how the world we live in today is made for the many, but the world after the tribulation is going to be made for the few. And the comparison is, is a huge wave in the ocean to a drop of water. That's how many people are about to go away. Well, all of these wicked people, these people who are an enemy with the people who keep the commandments are going away. It says they will perish over the whole earth. The whole, All of them are going away. There's going to be nobody left that doesn't want to keep the commandments after these three days of darkness are over with, after these three years are over with. Um, and it says known or unknown. So whether... The, the owner, uh, known or unknown part talks about those who are committing unintentional sins. There are some people out there, they're, they're not in, at war against the remnant. You know, they have no problem against the remnant, but they're not keeping the commandments either, which means that they are lawless. You know, they're unknowingly lawless because they never knew that they were supposed to be keeping the feast days and doing what the scripture says or whatever. They're going to perish, too. At the end of this thing, you know, it's only going to be those who keep the law. The law is going to be what helps them through the tribulation, you know, um, understanding what it is that you're supposed to be doing at certain times when you're supposed to um, um be clean. I mean, it boils down to, to simple stuff. When it is that you're supposed to take a bath and, you know, when it is you're supposed to wash your clothes. Well, those individuals who don't know those cleanliness laws, you could imagine that there's going to be a day when illnesses as the result of their physical uncleanliness will make them sick and they will die. That's the purpose of the law to teach you, you know, how it is to survive the tribulation. And so um, a lot of them that, you know, Seeing they think they're neutral, they're going to perish too because of their lack of knowledge in the Word of God. Um, let's see. We want a universal darkness with the exception of a few whom God will convert. Okay, so this, so a few people w who aren't keeping the law will will survive, and these 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 individuals will you know they'll be um, basically it'll be people who. Um, they have enough merits in order to go. The, the stains on them aren't that bad to where, you know, all it's going to take is a little bit of coaxing to get them 
to you know keep the law you know and the father because our father knows our spirit he knows our heart he knows the ones who want to do wicked and he knows the one who just need a little bit of instruction and they'll be quick to do right you know as the many of you guys watching this video you just need somebody to point you in the right direction and you'll head in that direction you know and so there'll be a few of those a few of you, them that will make it well you know the rest of the ones who make it will be um headed in that dry direction you know um full-fledged it says the air shall be infected by demons who will appear under all sorts of hideous forms yeah um this is one of the promises this is what one of the things you read about over there in the book of revelation how these demons are going to uh be manifest that's why the father uh that's why the messiah is coming across the sky with ten thousand times ten thousand of his angels is to help fight against these demons that would otherwise destroy the remnant as well. So, um, but understand that the father's, you know, army of righteous angels are coming to help his people. It ain't coming to save the world. The world, you know, is about to get tossed up like a salad. And, you know, a lot of people are going away. But, you know, in order to keep, you know, all of these wicked spirits from destroying the father's people who they want to get anyway um the messiah comes across with ten thousand times ten thousand angels to prevent them from actually um being able to um um win that war let's see does she go on there mm. let's go ahead and read this part down here this is looks like a different name maria julie jenny 1850 to 1841 this sounds like another person um, known as the Britain Stemictus, sorry, I didn't read this beforehand, expounded upon the story of the three days of darkness, okay? So this is somebody else that maybe got some other uh, prophecies to add to it, saying that it will occur on a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday when all of hell will be let loose to strike at those outside their homes and those without a lit blessed candle of pure wax okay <clears throat> see like i said you have to you have to get past the catholic slant here of course you know sundays they like sunday sunday is their 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 you know sun god worship day so of course you know sunday is not included in there for them um I don't know if I understand that part saying that it will be on a Thursday, a Friday, and a Saturday. A lot of times when you read these days like this, you have to think about the uh, days of the week and, you know, see if that's what it's talking about. I can't see that, you know. So what? It's talking about the sixth day, the fifth day, and the fourth day of week. So I'm not really making any sense out of that part there. Uh, I have to think about that. I didn't actually hear that other guy read that, so... I haven't really thought about this part at all. Um, when all hell will be let loose to strike at those outside their homes and those without a lit blessed candle of, of pure wax. This lit blessed candle obviously is talking about the lamp uh, with the oil there um, that we hear about like over there in the book of Matthew. I can't remember which it was, but it's talking about how they had the oil. And this is, you know, this is the the pure understanding of the word, the spiritual light, the, the light of understanding that only comes from our Father is what this is talking about. You ain't going to be able to go buy no beeswax. Don't. That's materialistic, guys. There's not a candle that you can buy in the store or any place on this earth that's going to help you during this time. In fact, if you do go try to buy something or purchase something, it's actually going to work, you know, to your, to the opposite effect. It's going to have the opposite effect because this is spiritual warfare and, you know, you cannot approach any of this spiritual warfare with materialistic weapons. They're going to backfire in your face. They're going to backfire in your face. Uh, like showing up to a knife fight, showing up to a gunfight with a knife, you know what I mean? You know, you'd been better off if you was empty-handed, you know, coming in there with a knife when, you know, people got guns because you're going to be the first one to get shot kind of deal. So don't be thinking that there's a such thing as a blessed candle of pure wax. 
All right, so thought I'd share that with you guys. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom.